Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again. It's my full video review on the Phoenix Pro PRX100. So let's get right into it. Now this review is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to on this channel. Normally I would go over the build design, then I'll go over the features, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then if you should actually buy it or not. I will be going over those features in a second here, but before we get into that, I do want to talk about some major issues I ran into during my testing with the PRX100. I did reach out to the company that actually sent me this for review, uh, which was Phoenix. So again, thank you so much for letting me review this product. But I did reach out to them before recording today. I reached out to them about three days ago. I still have not heard anything back, which kind of gives me an inclination that they knew that they had this, these issues, I guess. And maybe it's just one of those things like this is the reason why they want people to review them. So I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to be honest. This is from my perspective and my testing but I'm also not gonna be unfair. Hey guys, Future Nick here. Just wanted to cut in real quick to give you guys a really important update towards this review. Now, as you know, this is the PRX100 review by Phoenix. And I know I just stated that they never reached back to me via email after I told them about the issues I was running into with this device. Now, I know I haven't gotten into the issues yet, but I will in a second. However, yes, we have the original one here that I'm going to talk about in this review. But they did finally get back to me right literally after I recorded that part of the video. I got an email on my phone from Phoenix and they replied saying, we're so sorry to hear about the issues you've been having. It could be a defective unit. So let's send you another one for free. So look at that. They sent me another one right to my doorstep. So I'm going to unbox this one. We're going to turn it on. I'm going to do some more testing to see if I run into the exact same issues and then We'll go from there, so we'll see you in a minute. So with that, the issues I've been having, there's three major issues. So here is the PRX100 itself. This is the uh, mixer. So what this essentially does, if you don't know what a mixer does, is you connect your microphone or audio source into one of the inputs, and then you have an output going to either a PC or a recording studio or a recording setup, and you would use this as a bypass so there's a ton of different knobs on here for different equalizer settings, different volume settings, and you also have phantom power to run specific condenser microphones. Now, the first thing I ran into is it does have a headphone jack, uh, which is an input so you can listen to whatever you're recording on the fly. And you can also use it through a PC as a audio converter. So you could essentially hear anything coming through your PC through the headphones and you could use this as a streamer or if you're using it for YouTube content and stuff like that or a podcast setup, which is very cool and it's nice. Now, I noticed that right away with my headphones, which I have the Biodynamic DT770s right here. Uh, they're kind of hooked onto this little stand, so I apologize, I can't really show you them but they are set at 250 ohms, which to be fair is a lot of power needed to run these headphones, but they're high quality studio headsets. They are meant to work with a more higher quality mixer or audio converter that can give off enough power to run them. Now, the first issue I ran into is this mixer does not give off enough power to run a 250 ohm headset. It did work, but I had to have literally every volume knob you could think of on here turned all the way up to 100 and the volume on my PC all the way to 100 to get any audio feedback. And even with all that, I still was only getting roughly around 30% to 40% of volume that you would normally get. So it obviously wasn't adequate and nothing I could use as a daily driver with my stream setup or with YouTube videos, which was a huge bummer. Now again, this could easily be fixed with just using a cheaper headset or a headset at least that's 80 ohms or less, which is pretty much every typical headset that's under $100. Now, that being said, this is only a $75 mixer, so I'm more than certain that 90%, if not 100% of the people that are going to be buying this or looking at buying this probably don't have the biggest budget in the first place, and you're more than likely going to have a cheaper headset. So you're probably not going to have this issue. The second issue was actually more major that I ran into, which was the terrible high sound floor coming through this mixer. And what that means is just there's so much white noise. It comes through with every type of recording situation. This could maybe be because I'm using a Shure SM7B microphone through a $75 mixer. Again, I'm bringing the price up because I think it makes sense as to what's going on. If you have a cheaper end microphone, like a USB microphone, uh, which you wouldn't be able to even use with this, but let's say for 
as an example, if you're using a Blue Yeti like USB microphone that's $100 or cheaper, you're probably not going to notice that white noise as much because it already picks up so much gain in general from the microphone and they're just cheaper end mics in general. Now, when you go from a $400 microphone that you're used to recording without any white noise and it sounds flawless, going to this is a huge downgrade. So, that being said, I, fig I figure if you use a cheaper end XLR microphone or a condenser microphone, you probably won't notice this, at least not as bad. Uh, it's It wasn't like to the point of where it was deal breaking or it was horrible, but it was definitely noticeable. And I'll have, again, some examples for you guys that you'll hear later on in the review uh, so you can get a feel for yourself, the differences between the, uh, using a, an audio converter such as my Behringer 204 HD, which is an audio converter, which is what I'm using right now to record this review versus using through the mixer. And again, it was a huge difference in terms of the white noise that I was getting. And I had the gain pretty low. And again, because of my headset, I had to have my gain higher than normal because it was the only way I could hear myself through the headset. And that was that was when the recording was just garbage. I literally couldn't use that, that recording in this video. Had to re redo it. So I went back in and I lowered the gain to the point where, again, I couldn't hear myself through the headset, but it was whatever. I recorded the session and it sounded okay, adequate, but there was definitely a lot of white noise still in the background. So again, it wouldn't be the end of the world if you're just starting out with your YouTube prowess or if you're recording stuff uh, just for a quick video or maybe you're using it for Zoom calls or Discord chats or whatever. It'd be fine for that, but it definitely is noticeable. And now this last thing, this last issue that I had was probably the biggest issue out of all three of these. And this is the main reason I reached out to them first before just putting it into my review. And I wanted to make sure I didn't have a defective unit. I very much might. I don't know. Uh, but th that being said, my issue was that my I recorded a 10 minute kind of test footage with using the mixer through my SM7B. I just wanted to record uh, a 10 minute like me talking about the product itself and originally this entire review was going to be recorded through this mixer so you could get a hundred percent you know a feeling for what it sounds like now here's the thing i had a 10 minute plus clip and only the first two minutes were eligible like i could actually listen to it and i could put that in a video and it wouldn't be a problem after that as soon as the two minute hit it got extremely crackly so not only just white noise but literal popping and crackling noises to where you couldn't even hear what I was like. You couldn't understand what I was saying. It didn't make any sense. It sounded like extreme interference, which again, doesn't make sense because it was stationary. I wasn't moving the cables around. I purposely made sure none of my cables are near like any type of electrical interference. So I know it wasn't my setup. It has something to do within this device. Um, so obviously I heard that after recording it and I was like, well, that sucks. That whole thing's trashed. But I went back into it, did another 10 minute recording just as a test this time. And it was the same thing. It was like roughly three minutes this time into it. It was fine. And then it started crackling again. So again, I reached out to them. I never got a response. So that's why I'm talking about it in this video. I want to put that out there. It could be a defective unit. So I'm not going to put that as like a don't, you know, stay away from it. Do not buy. But those are the three major things I noticed uh, bef while making this review, while I was doing my testing that I really think you guys need to know about. And I want them to know about it so they can fix it if they ever were to make a second generation. Because for what it is, I want to say like the build quality, the design, the, the ease of use, all of that together is an excellent package for $75. Like I actually was pretty blown away by everything you get uh, out of the box for 75 bucks. So with that, let's get into the actual review and go over what I do like about it. And then again, my final verdict. So. Let's get into it. So in the box, you get the device itself and it is pretty hefty. Uh, it's actually a lot lighter though than I expected it to be. I really thought it was gonna be a pretty heavy device uh, because it does have a metal front and a metal back, but it is a very thin aluminum metal. So again, it makes it lighter than you would think with a very hard plastic sidings. And you do get some rubber feet, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about it scratching your table or wherever you're going to be placing it but it is rather large so it's roughly about a foot tall and about 10 inches wide so keep that in mind that if you're going to be buying this for a smaller desk you may need to look at something else or look for an area specifically to place this in the box you also get a pretty long usb cable which surprisingly was a male to male usb a it wasn't like a usb 
A to USB micro or anything like that. It, that was kind of weird. But that being said, it's nice that they include it in the box. You don't have to go and buy it. And it is relatively long. So for most people's setups, it won't have a problem. But the one thing I did have a problem with is it also comes with a DC adapter. So it, it, this is to plug in for power to a, a wall outlet or some type of surge protector or something like that, right? But for some reason, they gave you this, again, a pretty lengthy USB cable to your PC, but they gave you the world's shortest DC connector. So you were forced to be within about two feet range of, of your wall outlet. So definitely a downside there. I was forced to basically move my entire XLR setup to be over on my left side here, sitting on top of my PlayStation 4 in order to be close enough to a wall outlet. And that's just a bummer. So Phoenix, if you guys are listening, please for your next iteration, make the DC adapters longer, at least, at least four feet minimum. Because trust me, people need it. That being said, going around the inputs and buttons from the top to bottom, left to right. Uh, so on the top left, we have the plus 48 volts phantom power button switch, so you can turn it off and on. And again, this is only for condenser microphones. Uh, so if you ever needed extra phantom power, there it is. And then we have the power switch. To the right of that, we have an aux input, and then again, your studio headphone jack for monitoring for your different types of inputs. And then going below that, we do have two XLR outputs for left and right channels. Going to the left, we have the four inputs for XLR cables. Now, only two of these work with phantom power. As you can see, the two on the left have the mic, and then the two on the right have mic plus 48 volts, which tells you phantom power. I, I did notice this after the fact. I, I plugged in my microphone originally in the, in the very first one in input one. Couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting any audio until about five minutes later, I realized, oh, only two of these have phantom power. And with the cloud lifter connected to my SM7B, I needed that phantom power. So moved it over and it fixed it right away. Going down for every single line, we have their individual gain, high, mid, low, aux effects, pans, and levels, different knobs. So these are very nice. It's, it's cool to have this on the fly, especially for hardware before recording or during recording, instead of having to mess with a lot of the stuff in post. So the gain knob is pretty self-explanatory that either lowers or, or heightens your gain from your audio input. And then the high mediums and lows are your equalizer settings. So these are pretty easy to, to manipulate and you can hear it on the fly right through the microphone in your headset. It was pretty cool being able to hear the differences of messing with the mids, highs, and lows on the fly like that without having to mess around with it in post. And that definitely is a benefit and a, and a huge improvement with a mixer over just an audio converter because most audio converters, no matter how much money you pay for them, you're really only going to give a couple hardware features to mess with with your, with your microphone input versus doing it in post. And at the very bottom, your level is just for the amount of sound coming through to your headset. So again, for direct monitoring purposes, if you want to hear live before you hit record what your microphone is going to sound like, which is really, really convenient. Shifting over to the right side, again, kind of going back to the top here, we do have the original left and right channels for analog recording. We have a couple LEDs for left and right channels. This is while recording, it'll actually light up letting you know how many decibels you are recording with if you're peaking or anything like that, which is very nice to see as an indicator. Below that, we have an MP3 player. Essentially what this means is not only is this your PC input, so you connect the USB from this side and then you cut that USB to a USB port on your PC to connect and record via PC. But this also, you can connect a USB drive with music on it or an MP3 player or you can connect it, yes, via Bluetooth, which is pretty interesting. Uh, the Bluetooth seemed to work just fine, but again, for audio quality sake, I probably would never use it if you're gonna be recording professionally or at least trying to. But as a hobbyist or something fun, it is cool that it, that is included, especially if you're gonna be using this on the go. And it does have a little LCD screen that just gives you some information depending on which track you're on, playing, pause, or which mode you're set to. Going below that, we have the headphone volume. So again, this is the volume that's going through your headphones. You tape MP3 volume, a delay, and a repeat as well, which is pretty nice, again, to have on the fly and for all your recording purposes. And then we have the main volume slider, which just feels really good. I mean, I don't really have any complaints about the build quality at all. I think, honestly, it's pretty well made. I think all the knobs are pretty well made. Nothing feels cheap or flimsy or that they're going to break anytime soon. Overall, very, very pleasantly surprised with the build quality and design. 
and we kind of already went over most of the features, what's going over the design for it. Uh, the main thing again is I 100% use this with my testing for PC only or recording through a PC. I don't have anything else uh, that I could record with, mainly because I don't record live vocals or I have a band or anything like that. This is strictly all through the PC. So that is gonna be my perspective with this. I also again tried the Bluetooth, but it's not really anything to write home about. Now, going to the PC, the one thing I would have preferred, especially for if you're gonna be using this as your home setup, if you're a streamer or for YouTube or something like that, is I wish the input for the USB wasn't on the front. I wish it was in the back where the power input is because then it would be, you know, a little bit out of the way and it wouldn't look as weird having it just sticking out and going over to your computer. So that definitely maybe for the future for a new setup or a new version is to put the USB input to the back or on the side so it's not in the way. On top of that, there's no drivers you have to install or anything like that. It's literally plug and play and just find it in your Windows audio settings as the proper input and output and you're pretty much good to go. So with that, let's get into some tests of me recording some samples with the PRX100 using my Shure SM7B. Now again, keep in mind that we had some issues along the way and you can t definitely tell the differences in the high noise floor. Uh, we'll get more into that in a minute when I talk about the actual sound quality and recording. All right, this is the first test with the PRX100. As you can hear, the noise floor is a little bit higher than on the Behringer. The biggest problem with this though, is that I have to turn the gain pretty much halfway. It may be even lower than that, around 40%, in order to get this level of volume. So if I start turning the gain up, you start hearing that noise floor coming in, and I'm obviously blowing out the microphone, so I'm gonna move it back down to where it was. So he, right here is, is basically perfect, it's just fine. But again, I've, I've noticed that compared to my Behringer, this is 100% <laughs> more of a, uh, an issue in, in general. So the biggest thing is you're paying $75 for this mixer. I think this is definitely catered towards other equipment that is also around the $100 range. If you buy anything over that, but you buy this cheap mixer, you're going to run into the same problems that I do, or I am having to say. So if I were to plug in a cheaper headset, there would probably be no reason or no problem at all. All right, guys, so this is the first recording test with the new PRX100. This is the one they just sent me in the mail. We're going to be going through this, just making sure we don't get any of that weird popping noise like we had before. Uh, that was the biggest issue with the original one. All right, so we just did another test with the brand new PRX100 that I have right here. And as you can hear, we're still having the same exact popping issue now. Before you come at the comments saying, well, why didn't you use a different audio program or maybe it's your computer or whatever it is. I tried three different USB ports with three different recordings. I tried switching the program and recording with Audacity. I tried recording with Sony Acid and I tried recording with Sony Vegas as well. Every single one of them came out where once like a minute or two passed of recording, that popping noise started coming in. I cannot figure out what it is, what's causing it. I even thought for a minute, maybe it's interference from like my technology over here. I have a Nintendo Switch right here, my computer right here. I even tried moving the entire device over here, completely out of range of everything for the final recording. And that's the one you guys heard, still popping. So I don't know if it's something that is defective in all of their units, but this is two units in a row, exact same issue. So I cannot chalk this off as a non-defective unit, um, mainly just because like two in a row, I mean, it's it's a problem with all of them, obviously, at this point. Uh, on top of that, the extremely high noise floor is a, it's a huge turnoff for me. It's just, again, if you're a hobbyist, it's not a big deal. If you're not listening for that kind of stuff, you're probably not going to notice it. And yeah, in post-production, you can kind of alter it a little bit to make it sound better. But for most people, it's an annoyance, and especially if you're using it for live streaming, you can't really obviously post process that. So most of those people are probably gonna stay away from this. Now again, that is 100% recording it through the PC. If you aren't recording it through a PC, you probably aren't gonna run into any of these issues. But that being said, if you're buying this mixer as a converter for an XLR microphone and you're going to record it through a PC, you might run into these exact same issues. So definitely be warned. So as you can hear, there just is, it, in general, it's got such a high noise floor that in my personal opinion, I would stay away from this if you're going to be using it for any professional recording. If you're using it just for as a hobbyist or again for like Zoom calls, or you're just trying to test out XLR setups for the very first time in your life, 
and you're recording stuff for fun, then sure, 75 bucks, you're not really breaking the bank in that situation, so sure, I would recommend it. But again, if you are trying to be more professional and you're spending a lot of money on a good microphone and maybe a good headset, you definitely wanna save some money and probably invest in a good mixer or audio converter as well. So that is the biggest thing to take away from this video is I just wanna let you guys know that if you're looking at getting a cheaper lower end mixer, this is probably not the right one for you unless you're just gonna be using it for fun and for an, a hobbyist situation. Cause yeah, if, uh, if you're trying to do any actual legit recording with this thing, I probably would stay away because that noise floor is really, really high and pretty bad. But it is kind of a shame because everything else I really liked about it. I love the different settings and the different equalizer knobs as well as the delay and repeat features. I loved having four separate inputs for microphones and also the heft and the build quality just felt pretty damn good for a $75 device. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed my full video review of the PRX100 audio mixer by Phoenix. Let me know in the comment section below if there's anything that I may have missed or anything you, you have any questions about. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I do want to give a quick shout out to Phoenix for letting me review this product for free. So thank you guys so much for sending me this and I hope you guys have a lovely day. Leave like, share, support as always. Subscribe so you do not miss the next one and we'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace out.